Right, we are now live. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And a very warm welcome to the RIVA Cityscape Intelligence Winners live stream session. Thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon to celebrate this competition's winner. I hope everyone is safe and doing well at this unpredictable time. I am Athuna Murugesh, the RIVA Business Development Manager for the Gulf, and it's my pleasure to announce that the RIBA have recently opened one of its first international offices in Sharjah in the UAE. I am delighted to announce that the RIBA have chosen the GCC as one of its international locations to further serve our global members. In order to, del to deliver better buildings and most importantly, create a stronger community of architects. The recent pandemic reminds us all that we are one global community. At RIBA, we are still optimistic and we believe by working with the architecture communities across the globe, we can build the next phase of our new normal. With this in mind, along with Cityscape Intelligence, we launched the sketchbook competition in early May this year. Along the theme of culturally significant vernacular architecture in the GCC region. As much of the GCC began taking precautions around COVID-19 and most people chose to stay at home, we hoped architects might turn inwards and take some time out to focus on the skill of sketching to highlight and celebrate the commonalities and difference, differences within vernacular architecture in the region. This competition was open to architects in seven countries across the Gulf, including the UAE, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Sultanate of Oman, as well as Jordan. We saw a wide variety of impressive entries from architects as well as architecture students. Today we have members tuning in from across all seven countries once again as a culmination of this event to delve deeper into the thought process and techniques behind the winning sketch. Now, before announcing the winner, I would like to introduce our esteemed judges based out of various corners of the world, actually. Apologies, everyone. Slight technical issue here. One second. There we are. So the head judge of this competition is Chris Williamson from the UK, the founder of Western Williamson and Partners with offices in five global cities with over 150 architects. Chris recently completed a two year appointment as the RIBA International Vice President as well. The second judge of this competition is Sheikh Azam. Sheikh is the senior architect at the Dubai Land Department and team leader of the Property Survey Department in the UAE. Sheikh is also the founder and partner of Merchants Park, which is an architecture practice in Dubai. The final judge of this competition is Dr. Fodil Fadli. Dr. Fadli is the head of architecture and urban planning at Qatar University. He is the recipient of several R&D grants and holds a PhD in sustainable architecture. I would like to thank this panel of judges for their time and kind support in this competition. And now moving to the announcement of the winner, which is why we all have tuned in today. The winner of the RIBA Cityscape Intelligence Sketchbook competition is Wael Al Masri from Jordan with his sketch titled A Passage from the Heart of Sharjah. Interestingly, our winner has several other sketches from different views on the heart of Sharjah, which we'll, we will be displaying as well for a rounded perspective on the chosen theme. Lastly, I would like to thank Cityscape for their kind support in partnering on this competition. On that note, I would like to introduce Tanisha Naidu, the head of content for Cityscape in former markets to kindly introduce us to our winner today. Thank you, Mathuna. So just to give you a bit of an introduction into Cityscape Intelligence, Cityscape Intelligence launched earlier this year and aims to provide cutting edge features and analysis on real estate investment and development, technology and innovation and architecture in both the MENA region and across the globe. Both Cityscape Intelligence and Reba have been amazed at the talented sketches we have received from across the Gulf of the sketchbook competition illustrating the revival of sketching and a silver lining in the current period we all find ourselves in. 
In the end, a unanimous decision was made by judges which saw architect Wael al-Masri, founder and chief architect of Wael al-Masri planners and architects, emerge as our winner. With the judges praising his sketching technique and his poignant ability to illustrate light and shadow in his sketch of the heart of Sharjah. So who is Wael? Well, the Jordanian architect has cemented his reputation in the Arab region over the last four decades and has contributed to the development of architecture through his designs, research and lectures. Serving as the president of the Jordanian Architect Society, accolades to his name include being among the top 50 influential architects from the Middle East in 2019, achieving the Arab Architect Award for his lifetime achievement from the Arab Towns Organization and receiving the Hayward Prize in Manchester. I would now like to introduce you all to Wael as he takes us through his winning sketch. I'd like to take you through the recreation of my competition sketch, which I started by drawing the scene outlines, the skeleton of the historic building, the main features and details, uh, and focusing on the wind tower, which is carefully positioned to heighten the dynamic composition of the scene. All other elements are sketched at this stage, including the deep arches and the wall accessories, such as lanterns and gargoyles. In this stage and throughout the process of sketching, I try to pay good attention to scale, proportions and details to be as close as possible to actual characteristics of the scene in order to convey an honest depiction of it. I then moved into shading of surfaces and elements. In this case, starting from the far left side, trying to keep my hand away as much as possible from the rendered parts. I also use a tracing paper to protect the drawing from smudging while sketching. An important element in this scene are the facade arches. As you can see, the rhythm of the repetitive arches directs the view toward the main feature, which is the wind tower. The character of these arches is expressed and highlighted by increasing the intensity of small pencil strokes and dots to heighten the effects of light and shade and the feeling of mass and depth. The wind tower reflects the identity of traditional architecture in Sharjah and in the UAE in general. I give this iconic element the special attention it deserves through rendering and shading in order to express its prominent form by highlighting its deep recesses and fine articulation and details. Then comes the expression of delicate stucco texture with its weathered conditions trying to express material and aging of the wall finish, also rendering the wall mounted elements such as gargoyles and lanterns with their playful shadows. I even added the effects of water as it drips from the gargoyles and from the top of the wall parapet. The dark wall at the right side, together with the one on the left side, uh, framed the scene and helped focusing on, on its central features. The rendering of the wall on the right side expresses the humble character of the building as it reveals the cracks and surface chippings and expresses its wall decay in general. I left the floor till the end. Here, the deep shaded passage pavement accentuates the brightness of the facade and together with the shadows of the building on the, on the opposite side, provide a strong dark base for the whole sketch. In conclusion, what I try to do in this sketch is to depict the qualities of this beautiful vernacular setting and to express my love of this humble architecture. As mentioned previously, Weil is an artist and these are his various other sketches on the heart of Sharjah.
Now introducing you to our winner today. So good afternoon, Weil. Thank you for joining us and congratulations for winning the RIBA Cityscape Intelligence Sketchbook Competition. We will now begin our Q&A session with our winner to understand the background of the sketch and techniques used. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Hi, Weil. Um, let's discuss the title of your piece first and the inspiration behind it. Sure, um, uh, I named this sketch uh, a passage from the heart of Sharjah. Uh, it, it actually focuses on the facade of an old house uh, that used to belong to uh, a man from Sharjah. He's Mr. Muhammad Hassan Qadim. Uh, and the building uh, that you see in the sketch on the right hand side uh, is currently being used as the house of traditional collections and is currently operated by the Sharjah Heritage Institution. Well, could you describe what you have portrayed in this specific sketch? Uh, actually, the facade of this uh, house uh, reflects the general character of Emirati architecture or Emirati vernacular architecture with its uh, inward oriented courtyard typology characterized externally by solid, massive walls built with coral stone, a common material uh, that is used to be used in this uh, part of, uh, of the Emirate, Emirates, uh, and is rendered with stucco. Uh, it includes arched recesses or niches topped with the famous wind tower that has become an icon of Emirati architecture. We see that you have quite a few sketches of the heart of Sharjah. Could you expand on what the heart of Sharjah is for our non-local audience as we have participants tuning in from seven countries in the Gulf? Uh, heart of Sharjah is a new name for an area that is uh, uh, the historic part of the city of Sharjah. This is where it, where it all started uh, on the shores of the Arabian Gulf back in the 19th century. Uh, and, and grew under the rule of uh, Al Qasimi family to be a major trading port uh, in the region. And, and actually, it had the longest souk in, in, uh, in the Emirates along the Sharjah Creek. Uh, starting in the 1960s, this area went through major transformations due to modernization. Uh, many of its traditional buildings were demolished. Uh, unfortunately, and replaced by uh, wide streets and modern medium-rise concrete towers. Many areas were left empty after the demolition of all buildings until His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan Al Qasimi started a city revival campaign that resulted in a good deal of reconstruction and restoration. Um, in, nine, in 2008, I was assigned by the Sharjah Investment and Development Authority, Shuruq, and the ruler's office to head a team of architects to come up with a concept master plan for this area, which was named uh, thereafter the Heart of Sharjah. Uh, in 2010, I was appointed by Shuruq as the custodian uh, for the development of this historic area, which is now being evaluated uh, for consideration by UNESCO for the World Heritage List. That's a kind of a brief about the context, the context of the uh, of the sketch uh, in charge. Well, what is the cultural significance of your sketch? You've chosen the UAE. What was the reason behind this? Uh, actually, this passage uh, is part of the surviving historic fabric uh, of the old city which inspired our master plan in, in, in which I tried to stitch up the scattered old buildings and create connectivity within a comprehensive fabric that is based on the old maps and aerial views that became available to us while accommodating contemporary needs and requirements and producing a sustainable built environment uh, that would inspire other urban developments in the UAE and, and, and the region. 
So uh, the, this, uh, the context of the sketch has uh, a cultural, historic, uh, and environmental significance uh, that I was hoping in the sketch to bring about. So this particular sketch, as you mentioned, is focused on the UAE. Are there similar structures in other Gulf countries as well? Uh, actually, there are common features that can be found in vernacular architecture across the Gulf region, all the way north from Kuwait down to uh, in the south in, in Oman. Uh, this is due to the shared environmental, cultural, political, and economic conditions that uh, have made up the identities of Gulf societies. Um, I was born in Kuwait and lived there for three decades and have repeatedly visited the UAE over the past uh, 30 years. I also have visited uh, all other Gulf countries and designed projects in them. The commonalities between uh, the traditional architecture uh, in, in, this, uh, in this region is quite evident, although it is also easy to distinguish between specific details related to different localities uh, due to variations in building materials, techniques, and influences from the surrounding neighboring uh, regions, and the trading with um, uh, even further away places uh, such as uh, India and uh, East Africa. Well, let's talk about the medium you chose to create your artwork with and why. What technique have you used for your sketch in terms of strokes? There appears to be a focus on stippling technique in the sketch. Um, I used pencil on cancel paper. Uh, for me, this is a simple drawing medium to express the modest character uh, of this traditional architecture. Most of these buildings um, are made of white, uh, or mud washed walls. So pencil is perfect to express them uh, in, in sketching. It's, it's, they're almost black and white. Uh, I, I use small strokes, uh, which sometimes are reduced to dots uh, for, for a particular reason, to express the render finished walls and to help me in controlling the in intensity of shade and shadow uh, by varying the densities of the dots, the more dense they get, of course, the darker surfaces get. Uh, I, I find this uh, technique, which uh, I have not actually used in, in, in many of uh, my other sketches, but I found it very um, helpful in bringing out the qualities of this particular scene. You know, continuing regarding your technique use, there's a clear play on light and shadow in this sketch. Could you expand on that slightly? Yes. Uh, as you know, uh, our region here is well known for its strong uh, sun throughout the year, which makes the, the play of light and shadow very characteristic in buildings that have depth and uh, have articulation of walls and surfaces. Uh, this particular scene and this building is, is, uh, is one of these examples. It's very simple, uh, as most of uh, Gulf architecture, uh, vernacular architecture is, and uh, has some uh, uh, features in its facade, as I explained, um, that really uh, uh, catch the light in and, uh, and, and allow to create this uh, shade and shadows. Uh, and I wanted to highlight the qualities of this architecture in the sketch by bringing about this play of light on its walls and surfaces. Uh, Corbusier once said, our eyes are made to see the forms in light. Light and shadow expose the forms. Uh, I wanted to dramatize and expose these forms in this setting, in the sketch. That's very interesting. We've noticed that most of your work is hand drawn. Do you prefer hand sketches to digital sketching? And is there any reason for this? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, and, and there are uh, at least a couple of reasons. 
First, I believe in hand sketching because it allows for a, a great deal of focus and attention on, on details. Uh, I'm, I'm so fond in, in, in details, uh, which results from uh, this direct connection from the brain to the eyes, to the hands, to the pencils. Uh, digital sketching, uh, in digital sketching, some of this focus uh, may be lost. Um, secondly, perhaps rather too late for me uh, to learn digital sketching. So I leave it to the new generations, uh, but I would still encourage them uh, to, to, to do hand sketching and to master it. As you rightly mentioned, nowadays there is in fact a great focus on digital rendering and modeling and architecture. Do you find sketches to be an important skill to actually cultivate for future architects? No, well, definitely, definitely. Sketching, sketching for me uh, is not just a way to relax or pass time or unwind after a busy day at the office. It is, uh, it is a, actually an essential part of my work. The benefits of sketching are incredible and, and can help improve the architect skills in many ways. Sketching improves creative design abilities uh, by developing different parts of the brain and helps with communicating ideas to clients effectively and um, efficiently. efficiently. I, I always do that uh, when presenting to my clients. In addition, to helping to focus and, and uh, to pay attention to details and, and proportions, which are essential skills to architects, Sketching helps in building self-esteem and, and getting a sense of achievement and, and, and confidence uh, through artwork as one gets better and better at it. And finally, what advice do you have for architects and artists when it comes to cultivating the skill of sketching? Well, my advice uh, to them is to make a habit of sketching and doodling while you design and when you visit places of your interest uh, and of architectural and urban value. Uh, don't just take mobile images or uh, uh, photographs. Uh, no, uh, exert the effort to, to, to sketch. Explore sketching techniques which you feel happy and comfortable with and, and keep sketching and improving on them. Um, I would also advise them to Apologies for that technical difficulty. Um, seems my internet went out. Um, but 
just to take you through our shortlisted candidates, um, our shortlisted candidates were nothing short of impressive, and many of them drew on the current COVID-19 era to reminisce about a time without social distancing. So let me take you through to uh, through to some of the top listed candidates who submitted their entry and tell you why the judges were wowed. In second place, we had Atif Kedar from Oman. Atif illustrated the old Nizwa in Oman, a 200 year old renovated house. The sketch shows the street in front of the house and the light that penetrates in between the narrow alleyways. According to the judges, the sketch is an example of an absolutely creative spirit that forged the skilled hands and a unique set of sketching skills. In joint second place was Majid Mohammed Yunus from the UAE. His drawing was of the Bastakia in Dubai. The area is a well-preserved area known for its rich vernacular architecture and is the reason why the art artist chose it in the first place. The key feature of the style of archi ar architecture are the wind catchers, which helped in natural ventilation. For the judges, it illustrated a forensic recording of an important heritage. In third place was Hiba Tanous of Qatar. The sketch depicted the Alcoa Mosque. The early mosques in Qatar were traditionally uncomplicated and consisted of a simple architectural design. Unfortunately, the few that I left mostly left forgotten, abandoned or waiting to be demolished, according to the artist. The sketch aims to celebrate one of the still functioning early mosques found in the area. Judges praised its innovation, saying it displayed great creativity melted with innovative modern representation techniques while sketching the past. Fourth place went to three very talented architects. First one, Christine Espinoza Erlanda from the UAE. She took on the Dubai traditional souks here in this drawing. Her sketch is titled A City Inside a City. The Dubai traditional souks have stood as a city source of pride for the Emirates for decades, contributing to the city of Dubai's distinctive character. According to the judges, the sketch shows a great level of detail and sketching technique and also captures a moment and an experience, which is what architecture is all about. Also in fourth place was Luna Alba Tirani from Qatar. This sketch, entitled A Stroke of the Past, is a pencil drawing that depicts the beauty of the vernacular architecture of Qatar, showing the elegant designs and materials used by the locals. Also in fourth place was Nida Salmanpour from the UAE. Her sketch is entitled Architect of the Pandemic. Using the stippling technique, the architect's aim was to express a vivid realization of how strongly one's socioeconomical standing factors into their vulnerability in a time of crisis, and how our spaces and built environment is a direct presentation of that standing. And finally, in fifth place, went to Yasmin Mansour of the UAE. She also drew the heart of Sharjah. This sketch demonstrates the typology of the vernacular architecture in Sharjah. The sketch is an axonometric drawing revealing the sectional as well as the three dimensional qualities of the vernacular architecture. The judges praised the sketch saying it is a demonstration of the urban fabric and the architecture of the area and it was an excellent sketching technique that combined an axonometric view and a sectional cut. Now, a massive thank you to everyone who submitted their sketches for this competition. Our shortlisted candidates and our winner's design will be available to view on cityscape-intelligence.com and on the Rebo website. Thank you very much, Tanisha. Very interesting to get an insight into the judges' opinions on each piece as well. Apologies for earlier, we seem to have lost our winner towards the end of that session. However, we will have a recording of the session available to all participants, which we will share after this event. At this point of time, we will be closing today's session. While thank you very much for joining us for the session and congratulations once again. Your portfolio of sketches is truly inspiring. I would specifically like to thank our audience spanning across seven countries in the Gulf today as well. 
Once again, I would like to thank our wonderful judges for their time, Chris Williamson, Sheikh Sheikh Azam, and Dr. Foden Fadli for all their support in this competition. I would also like to thank Cityscape once again for their kind support in this initiative. Thank you everyone. We hope to see you at our future events. Thank you.